this is a ramping up your English book review. If your English proficiency is nudging into the advanced level, you might be able to appreciate this high-quality book from National Geographic. It's entitled World's Great Train Journeys. As the title suggests, readers will learn about passenger trains in countries outside of the United States. One chapter I especially enjoyed was the one about the train through Mexico's Copper Canyon. I should warn you, though, reading this book might lengthen your bucket list. Reading is the most effective way to build vocabulary for intermediate language learners. Reading World's Great Train Journeys would be an exciting yet challenging experience for English learners. If nothing else, you'll enjoy the beautiful photographs. For Ramping Up Your English, I'm John Letts. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English, a support program for intermediate level English learners who want to improve their English proficiency. If that's you, you're in the right place. This is segment two of episode 30. In our previous episode, we shared some tips on writing a report about a state. Here's a few tips about writing a country report. Now, like states, countries have their symbols and their flags. In Canada's case, the maple leaf is the defining symbol. You can write that as national symbol of Canada is the maple leaf, or you can use the possessive form and write Canada's national symbol is the maple leaf, as you see it here on the screen. We can use the same sentence structure we used with the states when it comes to listing the symbols of a country. Find out the length of the Canadian coastline and use either of these forms to write about it. Both are correct. Not every language has the possessive form of nouns. Your home language may or may not use the apostrophe to show possession. Notice how the apostrophe is like a floating comma and comes between the noun and the S. Now, if the noun is plural ending in an S, the possessive is formed by putting the apostrophe after the S. But it's more common to see a singular noun form of the possessive, as in the sentence you're seeing here. The apostrophe comes before the S. The possessive doesn't change the noun to plural, like a simple S added to the end. It's still one territory, and it possesses mineral resources. Be sure to add that apostrophe. So there are two ways to communicate the same thought. You could use a prepositional phrase as in the first sentence, or you can use the possessive form of the proper noun Canada. Canada's flag features a maple leaf. Now, to avoid overusing the name of the country, you can use its possessive pronoun, its. Canada's flag features a maple leaf. Its national symbol is the maple leaf as well. Notice that the possessive pronoun its does not have an apostrophe. So although the possessive is formed by adding an apostrophe, an S, to a noun, an apostrophe is not used for possessive pronouns. That's one of the crazy things about English. Now here's a list of possessive pronouns. Notice there are no apostrophes in any of them. My, your, his, her, it's, our, and their. Now you can use these sentence frames to report on the feature of the country you research. The national blank of Canada is, and then you put whatever it is. Canada's national blank is, its national blank is. So be sure to mix them up so you're not always using the same form every time. You'll use the same rich description words for Canada as you did for Alaska. Plus, you'll use some new ones. Now, let's see which descriptive words come to mind as we watch the westbound journey of the Canadian leaving Jasper National Park toward Vancouver. My two days hiking in Canada's Jasper National Park were rewarded with spectacular views and surprisingly pleasant weather. I had no car with me with which to get around, but I didn't need one. All these views were within walking distance. So was access to food and a warm place to sleep. 
The late March sunshine and crisp air were ideal for moving around under my own power. Crowds would come in the summer, but during my time here, I often found myself alone, just a mile or so from the train station. Speaking of trains, here's Via Rail's Canadian, the train that took me back to Vancouver. This switching yard ran right through the heart of the park. Returning one day from a hike, I had to wait for a long train of tank cars before I could cross and return to my hotel. As in the United States, the Transcontinental Railroad in Canada was an extremely challenging project designed to keep the country unified. The Canadian Railroad also provided a major push to create national parks and to transport passengers there. I had arrived at Jasper during spring break, and now I was returning to Vancouver and later to Eugene, Oregon on the train. This was the last leg of the cross-country trip. Some passengers had been on the Canadian for three days, and we still had another day to go. As soon as I could, I scampered up to the dome car where I got this view. At the rear of the train is a dome viewing car, like the one I was in. This one was for first-class passengers in the sleeping cars. I was in the coach dome car. The dining car separated the coaches from the sleeping cars. The dome car allowed me to see the oncoming freight train on parallel tracks. Below the observation deck, the dome car offered snacks for sale and tables at which to enjoy them. The dome car offered more than a great view. It was a place filled with excitement and positive energy great place for children, families. At one point, we skirted a large frozen lake. Oh, like, is that a glacial moraine? Really? Wow. So I'm trying to imagine it when that's thought, it's probably that deep blue kind of color that bluish green. Bluish green. On the return trip, we pass the eastbound Canadian and see the dome cars. Jasper National Park to Vancouver is just a small segment of the Canadian's four-day route, but it's a rich section, rich in scenery, conversation, and adventure.